Coach Taylor, your uh, path to the Super Bowl has taken some twists and turns, but I have to ask you, starting out, how does a football player from Norman, Oklahoma, end up being the quarterback at <laughs> University of Nebraska? How yeah, does that I was, happen? I was sooner born and sooner bred, <laughs> and, and I thought when I die, I'd be sooner dead. You know, that's the saying that the teacher yes. when you're young, so uh, my family, my dad played there and coached there. Um, I wasn't, they just won the national championship. I wasn't quite on their level yet. So I ended up going to Wake Forest, transferred, ended up at Nebraska. There's a very healthy respect. It's not, it's not a bad rivalry, like Oklahoma, Texas, or Oklahoma, Oklahoma. <laughs> it's a healthy, respectful rivalry. So uh, people were pretty happy when I went up there. Well, how did that start and playing quarterback at University of Nebraska? How did that get you going into your coaching career? Well, I played for a lot of really good coaches who'd been in pro ball, you know, starting with Bill Callahan, who was part of the West Coast offense, and Jay Norvell, uh, you know, was my quarterback coach and offensive coordinator. So those two guys taught me the rhythm and the timing of the pass game. And, you know, my dad had taught me the fundamentals of quarterback, but I'd never really heard uh, how to throw a, a Winston route on time, you know, five plant, throw, anticipate. And, and uh, so they, they taught me the nuances of it. When I graduated, I thought I can't go into the business world. I'm not smart enough for that. All I know is football. And so uh, it led me into coaching. And do you, it had to be an advantage that you had college coaches who really came from the pros. So you're in an NFL passing system right away, right? There's no question because I, I think because of the quality of coaching I got made me realize how much fun this could be and, and how much there is to know about the game. And they really set a great foundation for me to get into coaching. And uh, so it's worked out well. So you go, you take jobs, move up the ladder, and a lot of people don't know you were at University of Cincinnati. And I guess there's a weird story about how that time ended. Yeah. So I, I, I was at the Dolphins, um, got to call plays the last couple games of, of Dan Campbell's year there. Um, felt like I wanted to continue to be a coordinator. I didn't think that opportunity was going to happen in the league at that point. So I went to the University of Cincinnati, I had a friend on the staff. We spent one year there. We weren't really successful. <laughs> and, and the season ended. And uh, I was sitting in these stands. My brother coached for the Eagles. And I came to watch the Eagles play the Bengals. And bought a ticket. It's the, it's the second NFL bought game. Bought a ticket? Second NFL game I'd ever, I'd ever <laughs> been to. Um, sat down there in uh, one of the sections behind the bench. And midway through the first quarter, got a text that our head coach had resigned. And you know how it goes. Consequently, everyone's fired. So I think I'm one of the few people to ever get fired in the stadium, Paul <laughs> Brown Stadium, in a game. And, and I walked all the way down the highway to get to my car. Um, never picturing that I would be back in the stadium as a head coach. I, it's just, it's amazing how it all works out. What were your impressions of Cincinnati that, that first year and the city and their relationship with the Bengals? Fell in love with it, you know, and, and uh, I obviously didn't have much of a relationship with, with the Bengals because um, I was only here for about nine or 10 months. But, but during those nine or 10 months, my wife and I fell in love with the city. Our, our kids loved it. Um, she loved it, which is, which is always important. Um, it, it very much felt like Oklahoma to me. I always thought Oklahoma was in the Midwest. I've learned that this is really the Midwest, but uh, it, it's a place that we've certainly wanted to be, so we're happy to be back. So you're leaving the stadium, walking to your car, feeling like it's over in Cincinnati. Uh, I'm gonna go explore and go, go someplace else. Did you ever think you'd get a call <laughs> a couple <laughs> of years later, hey, come back? No, no, I, I think if you had asked me in that moment, um, I went through what, what a lot of fired coaches go through. What, what is next? Where are we going? Where are we moving? When are we moving? Um, and so I, I don't think I ever envisioned that I'd be back here in this stadium, uh, you know, being a part of something special here with this team. And part of that journey to get back was working uh, with Sean McVay. It Tell was. me about that. How did it take place? First of all, how did you get started with Sean? So we had met a couple times at the Combine. Uh, I wouldn't say that we knew each other very well. I didn't even know that I had his phone number in my phone, to be honest with you. Um, but, but I was out to lunch with some, some friends of mine who had just gotten fired as well. And my phone rings. It says Sean McVay. And I thought, he well, he, he, yeah, he just got the job in L.A. Um, and, and offered me the, the assistant receiver job. And he said, you got about 48 hours to think it through. Um, I think he called me back an hour later and said, what's your decision? <laughs> so That's I, I just said, you know what, I'm, I'm in, Sean. And, yeah. and it, it, on the phone, he's just so, his energy is so contagious and infectious that how can you not want to be a part of what this guy's selling me on the phone right now? And, and I'm very glad that I said yes. You've got a great system going there. Uh, he does, does a wonderful job with offense. You're part of it, coaching some great players. And 
you've, you've said that's kind of been the best part of your coaching life. It, it, tell me what you took from that or what yeah. was special about it. Well, you're just so excited to walk in the building every single day, uh, to interact with Sean and the other coaches, the players, the support staff. Um, you know, it, it was very demanding and the standard was very high, but we had the right group of players that Sean had helped to bring in. Some of them had been there, some of them they brought in, um, and they knew exactly what they were looking for him and Les Snead. And so, it, again, it just, it, it was just, you loved working, you loved grinding, um, and then the wins came because everybody was pulling on the same rope, the same direction. And uh, so again, it's it's just a place I enjoyed walking into work every single day, and that's important in this profession. No, oh, it is, it is. Tell me, I, I know you have a lot of uh, admiration for Sean. You even said the, the two-point play uh, in the championship game was from the, the McVay playbook. Yeah. What is the, what's the best thing you took from your, your time with Sean? Well, in terms of installing plays is, is the intent of why we're doing this. What are we trying to why attack? You're putting why a play we're in. doing this. And so it's not just, uh, hey, we're going to run this play. You have a, a six-step speed out. You have a stick route. Um, it, it's, it's just here's why we're doing it. Here's, here's what the defense presents. Here's how we're going to attack it. Here's, here's how we think it will play out. To happen. Correct. And so it's, it's the intent of why we're doing everything. And that's not just the playbook. That's why we meet the way we do. That's why we walk through the way. That's why we go hard on Thursdays and not Wednesdays. And, and uh, so the players understand that. They buy into it. And there's a reason why behind everything. So you're loving life, enjoying being with Sean, this great energy, this atmosphere. You're winning. And you get a call from Mike Brown. Tell me about that. <laughs> yeah, it, was, it happens very fast. you know. And, and a lot of that times when you're part of a really great team, um, those opportunities come for a lot of the guys on the staff. And so at the end of the season, um, you know, the slips come in and, and I, I didn't speak to anybody necessarily at the Bengals. It comes in and, and uh, so they, they said, we'd like to interview you. And, and I think a week later, I ended up at a hotel room in Westlake Village and there I am in front of Mike Brown and the family. And what was your emotion when he offered you the job? Ecstatic. You know, it's, it's, I, I was in the mix with a couple teams and this was the one I wanted, you know, and, and why, uh, why is that? Just because we'd lived here and, and we knew that this was a place that my family was happy. And I knew that the organization had the same values that I did, you know, loyalty and patience and treating people the right way. And um, it was something that I wanted to be a part of. And so uh, Duke Tobin was the one that called me and told me. And, and I remember I called my wife and, and she just broke down crying. And I think she almost walked back to Cincinnati, you know, she loved it in LA. It was great, but she was so, she had so many great friends that she'd built here in nine, nine months that we were here. Um, you know, she almost just started walking all the way back across the country to start looking for a house. So that was really important to you guys, not just the wins and losses and the, the type of team it's going to be, but where you're going to live and, and, and the city. And yeah. that's why it seems like you've got a special connection here. I believe that, you know, because we really feel that, you know, it's special people in the city, it's special people in the organization. Uh, people matter, you yeah. know, and, and uh, so that that's a big part of it. Is that where the tradition like of handing out the game balls? Yeah, the I, I really think so, you know, because you, you feel a part. Um, we've had some tough years here, and whenever I'm out about the community, no one has ever said a, a bad word to me. Everybody has said, we got your back, we see what you're doing, we're supporting you. And, and I, I'm not exaggerating. No one has ever said, hey, you got to pick it up. You got to win more games. I've never heard that. People have just been supportive. And so when we finally got to do the special things we always talked about and knew we were capable of, you want to make sure that you can share that with the community. So you get this call, you're excited, your, your family's excited, but you kind of know the history of the Bengals, at least the past, immediate past history. Uh, what was your thought process? How are we going to turn this around? Well, uh, day by day, you know, it's, there's there's no easy road to success. It's going to be very hard. Um, there's a lot of things that are going to happen behind the scenes that maybe the whole world doesn't see, but we know we're headed in the right direction. And it, it really starts with identifying the right pieces in the locker room. Who are the guys we can build around and can lead us into the future? And so you find, you know, a Sam Hubbard and a Jesse Bates and, and guys like that that you know are going to be a core part of this, Tyler Boyd, Joe Mixon, and you start to kind of build around that and, and just – the communication from top to bottom in this organization with Mike Brown, the rest of the family, Duke Tobin, myself, um, it, I think it's, it's something that a lot of people would be envious of because we're, we're so aligned and we speak so regularly um, that it really helps us all get pointed in the right direction. And I, I have to go back to Mike Brown. Uh, I worked with him on the competition committee and got to know him and had rivalries with him when I was in <laughs> Pittsburgh. But how special was that? Your first two years, you win six games yeah. and your owner says no. Coach Taylor is our guy. 
yeah. and we believe in him. What, what did that mean to you? It means a lot. You know, it's it's what he stands for, and and he, he's loyal, he's patient, um, he's realistic. You know, and I think that those were our, our conversations that we had on a daily basis. He understood the why of why we're doing everything. Why are we practicing this way? What were the issues in the game we just lost? How do we need to continue to grow? And I think when you have that communication and understanding, um, that that it allows you to continue to build things that, that you've already laid the foundation for. Uh, that's really special and hopefully a message to the rest of the league that, you know, patience can pay <laughs> off sometimes. Was there, in the, those first two years, it's, it's not going the way you envisioned. I know you think, hey, we're going to come in and get this turned around. And it was a slow process. Was there a moment that you said, this, I know we're going in the right direction? I, I think the, the biggest games for us were, um, we had lost to Cleveland on a last second play down here. Um, but, but we saw that, that we, were, we were headed in the right direction. And then we beat Tennessee the next week, and Tennessee was having a great start to the season. Um, and so th there was a lot of positive energy in the building. Um, even though we weren't winning a ton of games, I think this team felt like, okay, we're, we're trending in the right direction. We've got pieces that we can continue to build around. Um, and then Joe got hurt, you know, and that, that kind of set us back there for, for the end of the season. But um, the energy in the building, people saw that, that we have a quarterback that can win us a lot of games, and we got some pieces around it. We just got to continue to add to that. These players seem to have a, a tremendous belief in Joe. Yeah. Um, when did you see that he was going to be special? I think the on the first Zooms after we drafted him, you know, and how quickly he picked up the offense and the understanding of the types of questions he asked. And um, he wasn't afraid to say, I don't totally understand this. Why would we do this? You know, it's, it's not one of those young guys that just yes is yet to death. You know, yeah, I got it, I got it, and they don't. Um, that's what I really appreciate. Of all the things you can appreciate about Joe Burrow, I, I appreciate the confidence he has in himself and, and the way that he communicates with me and Brian Callahan and Dan Pitcher. Um, um, times he needs more information, times he'd rather do something else, and we can have those, those dialogues. I have to take you back to Championship Sunday, and you're playing, and you come back when this unbelievable game in Arrowhead, you're getting the, the trophy. What were you thinking about and what that meant to the, the city of Cincinnati and the organization? Well, I think I was really looking down on the stage at our, our players and coaches that were down below and just the, the joy in their faces, knowing the work that went in and, and just they were enjoying that moment. We know we have more work to do. We're playing the Super Bowl in two weeks, but, but for that day, you just got to appreciate kind of where we had gotten to and all the work that went behind it. And then to see all the fans in the lower bowl, you realize in that moment Your how fans. many people yeah. had traveled yeah. to that game and supported us. And uh, it was just, it's, it, it's an experience that will never be replicated. Mm -hmm. We hope to be in that situation many more times, but I think this one was extra special. Yeah. Well, you have that moment, and now I'm sure you're watching somewhere, watching <laughs> the, the NFC game. Yeah. Are you pulling for Sean? What, what's your emotions <laughs> at that point? You know, very, uh, of course I always pull for the Rams, uh, in, but, but very neutral in that situation. We'll play who we're going to play. And we were actually in the airport watching the fourth quarter as we were going through security. We got on the plane, we had it on our phone, and, and it was a tie game when the wheels went up and the Wi-Fi <laughs> cut out. And so we didn't find out for about 45 more minutes, you know, as you are on a plane and it goes up and you lose all that connection. So we, we didn't know until about 45 minutes after the game who actually won. What was your thoughts when you realized the Rams won? It's a great team, you know, and, and, and we're going to have to be at our best on that Sunday like every team playing in the Super Bowl does. And so, but this team has a lot of confidence. We've beaten a lot of great teams. Uh, we've put in the work to be ready on Sundays. We, we've got two weeks to get ready for this one, and we're, and we're going to do our best to get it done. I went through it a little bit in 06, uh, coaching against Lovey Smith. They're running the same defense that I'm running. We've been together. We've been in meetings. I know what he's thinking. He knows what I'm thinking. Um, is there a point in your mind where you say, hey, I know these offensive plays. I know what's coming. I know how they're going to attack us. He knows the same thing. Yeah. It's twofold because you also know the compliments to those plays. So, yeah, they're running this, but but they can do this off of it, you know. And so, um, you know, we've run into that a lot in the past, and so you have to be very careful of that. Three years have gone by. A lot of their players, a lot of their coaches have changed from when I was there. Aaron Donald was the only starter on that defense when I was there uh, three years ago. So um, both teams, I think, have evolved since the last time we played in 2019. When I went, uh, I hadn't been to the Super Bowl. I called a bunch of coaches that I knew to find out about the, the week and, and what to do. Have you talked to anybody or, or? 
You know, we, we, we've got a lot of guys on staff that have been. Brian Callahan's been recently with the Broncos two times in a row. Um, I was there in 2019. So um, we've got a little bit of feedback from some people, but we also feel like we got a pretty decent point in place. Been, been there. Well, that being an advantage, do you think the fact that you were there in 2019, were there some things you learned? Yeah, I, I think it's certainly a benefit. Um, I was also there with the Rams. So <laughs> it's the last time we were all there together. Um, so again, it's just about following our process and making sure our players are ready and confident on Sunday. And, and uh, I feel very good that, that we'll be in that spot. What, uh, in your mind, would be the key to Bengals playing the very best they can play? What do you have to do? Well, we've kept our composure throughout all these games. You know, whether we have the lead or we've been down, we've been in both situations. Our guys have been great situationally. Um, we, we've done a great job winning the turnover battle, and we've kept our composure through, through thick and thin. And I expect our guys to do the same. You have a tradition of writing things down, keeping notebooks. Uh, what? Uh, why are those notebooks special to you? Well, I, I'm pretty young, and I don't have the experience that a lot of people do, and so I have to learn quickly from the ones that I've had, and, and not repeat mistakes. Um, be quick to remember some of the good things that we've done, and so situationally, that, that's really where we're at as a staff. Is just trying to learn from everything that we've done in the past, our losses, our wins, things that have happened around the league. Um, so I, I go back through that, you know, on a weekly basis. Things that happened two years ago, managing timeouts, managing situations, and and just making sure that we don't make repeat mistakes. Have you looked at your 2019 Super Bowl notebook? <laughs> you know, that was that was a. Uh, uh, a little bit different for me. Um, so there, there's some notes that I have in there that hopefully will be helpful for us. Oh, I think they might, <laughs> they might be. No, that's a special time. And it, it's just been great to see. We flew in and last night and the flight attendants are all, oh, you're going to see my Bengals. And, <laughs> you know, you get to the car and everybody's talking about the Bengals. Is that why you're here? It has to be just unbelievable that this feeling that the city has right now. Yeah, man, and we isolate ourselves pretty good from it during the season. You know, I'm sure that's something after the season we'll get to enjoy a little bit more, but very happy for the fans, very happy for my kids in school, you know, and, and uh, what's that just, been like for them? Well, it's great, you know, because you think of all the things they went through for two years, you know, and, and people have been great, but, but, you know, there was a lot of sick days, sick days where they called in sick on Mondays after losses. And, How and come now, you're dead? How come they didn't win yeah. yesterday? Yeah. So it's, it's, uh, you get to enjoy that for all the players' families, all the coaches' yeah. families, and they're in it just like we are. Um, it's easier for us to manage than them at the other community. So I'm just happy for all the families and all the fans. You guys had some big acquisitions in the off season and um, probably wasn't in, in recent times people saying, let's flock to the Bengals. Uh, what happened there and how important was Joe Burrow in that process? Yeah, I, I think the players uh, got a sense that something special was happening here in our locker room. Um, but, but I won't lie and, and not think that Joe Burrow had an effect on that as well. Not necessarily him reaching out to guys, um, but just the players being known, knowing that he's a special player and that he can lead us to some great things and wanting to be a part of that. And as you know, it, it's critical to have a special quarterback. And when the guys around that know that anything is possible with that guy, they want to be a part of that. And I certainly think that that pays dividends for us. This playoff momentum is built and it's just gotten more and more exciting. How has it been? going around the city and seeing the, the fans so excited about Bengal football in the playoffs. It's been great. Just just driving into work, driving home. The people you do see are all in Bengals gear all the time now. Um, I drive by a gas station. People are pumping their gas. They got their Bengals beanie on and their hooded sweatshirt on. And and uh, the interactions I've had is, is going to these bars after games, you know, coming back from Kansas City at midnight, getting to go experience it with the fans for a couple of minutes. And so just seeing their energy and how much it means to them. Um, you know, not that we need any added motivation, but it sure doesn't hurt. What, is the, what does that do for you to, to know that? We just, you know, you just know everyone's hanging on every single play. And, and so we, it's our responsibility to put in the work to make sure that uh, our guys are prepared, our coaches are prepared, um, so that we can make our own locker room happy, but, but make the entire state of Ohio happy as well. I know what this feels like. I'm excited for you and uh, looking forward to watching you guys. Super Bowl Sunday. Thank you, Coach. Really appreciate it. Hi, I'm Mike Tirico, and thanks for watching. Make sure to hit subscribe for the latest news and highlights from NBC Sports.